Okay, let's get started. Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming. I'm so, I'm so happy to see so many of you here. And um, today's topic um, is a very hot topic. It's, um, it's very interesting as well. And um, according to our user survey, container has always been ranked as one of the top three interesting topics for our community. So, and there's still a lot of discussions and um, a lot of speculations and confusion. And I think it would be good to you know, try to use this section to get some of the, your answers, your questions answered. And today I'm very fortunate to have invited this elite panel for you. And we have both business people and technical people. We have people, you know, we have board directors, we have PTLs. This is a really heavy duty, heavyweight panel. So let me, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce this elite panel. So um, first of all, I'd like to introduce, we have two OpenStack board directors who also sit on CNC of board directors, Todd and Kanji. And then I'd like to introduce, we have three PTLs or ex-PTLs who work on container projects in the OpenStack community. And um, first, I have Steve, Steven. Yes. And then I have Gail. And then Michal. All right. OK, let's get started. And I, I do want to leave some time for you to ask questions. And um, again, like this is going to be a both business focus and technology focus, but not too much detail in technology, but more of on the issue side. OK, so first of all, we know there's a lot of things happening in the container space, right? Some of it's hype and some of them are true, right? So um, the two best people to talk about them are the two board directors who sit on both OpenStack board and CNCF board. So I'd like to invite Todd and Kanji to share with us what's happening in the container space, the good and bad and ugly. Good and bad and ugly? No, it's all good. All good. Container? All good. Containers, yeah. Great. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, Todd, Todd Moore, and, and I work for IBM, but I help put together the activities for the CNCF um, and, and have done the same in the past for OpenStack because we really felt that uh, the container world needed a locus for starting handling the issues that, that span the, the different environments who are using containers, whether it was Mesos or uh, Kubernetes or, or Docker, that uh, there were, were a set of issues, there was a set of common things that we needed to be doing, and that there was a, a new vision that we needed to have for truly cloud-native applications based on containers. So that led us to, to form the CNCF. But what we realized when we did that was that there was a lot of synergy back with all the other organizations that were going on. In fact, uh, because of my role here at, at the OpenStack Foundation, it was very natural to start bringing in the OpenStack uh, team to start talking about sharing what it was that we had and the important aspects and how all of this could play together across the containers. So it became less of a containers are going to take over the world to more of a cooperation between organizations that started to form. Uh, what we, we find is that, uh, especially in the, the CNCF world, is that we don't want to replicate everything, all the great work that OpenStack had done. All that difficult networking and storage and other mm -hmm. activities were, were just, it's security, et cetera, uh, just tremendous amount of effort, years of work put in. And to start from scratch and go do that all over again and replicate that just didn't make any sense. So, so that synergy started to build, and people could see that mm -hmm. we needed to start working together. Um, and we've extended that, that thought into places like Cloud Foundry, right? Cloud Foundry at its heart uh, underneath is, of course, containers, right? So we could have a common container specification under the OCI. I think Kenji wants to say a few words about that. And, and that common container, the Run-C container that came out of Docker, could be used everywhere, right? Um, so we, we started forging relationships with the Cloud Foundry team as well, too. So, so not only is Docker talking in, in part of this, but Cloud Foundry is as well. And, and then in CNCF, for this new cloud vision that we have, we need a common service broker, right? Everybody needs a service broker. It needs to be very good. So now we've spawned a project that we're working on across the Cloud Foundry team and the CNCF team to go build a service broker that we can all go pick up and use and, and not duplicate. So this theme is continuing, and we're starting to see that 
uh, a world of cooperation is building across the container projects. Now, there's, that's not to say that there isn't end fighting and little things going on, right? It's, it's also a hotbed of, of mine versus yours and other things, right? And people wanting to fork or rumors of fork or other things that, that go on. So, so all that is, is sort of playing itself out itself and, and people are starting to work together. And, and our hope here is, is that the work that we're doing there becomes something that you know, unifies people as opposed to seeing it, it, it break apart. And uh, so we'll see a lot more happen in that, that world. And I think we'll see you know, pieces of uh, really important infrastructure that Docker has, has been working on and other things start to come out and, and fill out the portfolio of things that we need to happen. And the CNCF and OpenStack and others will drive that. Great, thanks. Kanji? Um, hello, uh, my name is Kenji Kanshige. Uh, I'm in charge of open source software development team in Fujitsu. Uh, please forgive my poor English. Uh, Very good English. <laughs> diversity. Uh, uh, I have, uh, from my perspective, uh, I have three uh, topics. Uh, first three are uh, container related functionalities and capability. Uh, such as uh, Magnum and uh, Korea and Colab uh, has been uh, actively developing OpenStack, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, I personally uh, I am personally very interested in Colab project, which uh, will make uh, uh, OpenStack deployment uh, uh, much easier uh, because uh, it is a very new uh, use case of container technology in OpenStack. In addition to uh, deploying uh, application using container. And the secondary, uh, second is about uh, standardization effort of container. Uh, the standard uh, runtime and the uh, image format uh, is very important to ensure uh, the application uh, portability and the sustainability. The, those standards are currently uh, actively uh, discussed and developed in uh, open uh, container initiative, uh, as known as uh, uh, OCI, uh, since last December. And the uh, first specification will be released soon, I believe. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, it will, uh, uh, it, it will uh, bring our, uh, it will be our barrier step of growth of uh, container uh, ecosystem. And last one is, uh, about uh, momentum of uh, cloud native computing. Uh, in addition to uh, deploying the application uh, using container, uh, it is very important to, uh, to connect the applications and uh, provide them as a new service. Uh, the cloud native computing foundation, as known as CNCF, uh, hosts uh, various uh, project and is developing our software uh, building blocks for uh, cloud native computing uh, based on microservice architecture. And uh, in addition uh, to that, <clears throat> the standard API is uh, also very important. Uh, I believe that uh, standard API and uh, software building blocks uh, provided by CNCF will bring a uh, hyperscale uh, distributed uh, application uh, platform and uh, allow applications work together and create new values. Okay, well, I really appreciate, you know, Kanji and Ta, their contribution and being the bridge between OpenStack Foundation and CNCF and OCI. And I really think that, you know, OpenStack is an integrated platform, right? In, and we want to make sure that we welcome all these different various open source um, communities into our ecosystem. So thank you for your work. And um, so now, next, I would like to ask the, the technical folks, the PTLs, the XPTLs, and to kind of you know talk to us, uh, to everybody about what those three um, um, container projects in OpenStack. And I know some of you might know already, but I just want to kind of build a baseline so we all have an understanding of what kind of container work that we have been doing in the OpenStack um, environment. So would, Stephen, would you like to start? Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay, oh, that's working nice. Uh, so uh, I've really been involved on uh, making sure that uh, containers uh, are brought to OpenStack. That's really where I focused uh, pretty much the last uh, three years of my life in OpenStack. Uh, got involved in Magnum, uh, 
wrote most of the original commits and recruited the core team. So I know quite a bit about Magnum. Uh, Magnum is a really interesting case in which uh, we run Kubernetes on top of OpenStack. Uh, and then it, kind of at the same time, we started Cola. Uh, Cola right now is a, it deploys on with Ansible on bare metal. So it's not really something that fits well with cloud native. Although in the future, we're going to go to a model of um, uh, what I would call converged cloud, which is where you run uh, Kubernetes underneath and you run OpenStack on top. Uh, so that's where I see the future of those integrations uh, between Magnum and Cola. So they're kind of, uh, they're, they're both models, right? So you've got Kubernetes on top and you've got OpenStack on bottom, that's Magnum, and you've got Kubernetes on bottom and OpenStack on top, that's Cola Kubernetes. Uh, so that's, that's Cola and Magnum in a nutshell. Uh, so would you like to speak about Cola a bit? Yes, thank you. Um, my name is Michał Szczemski. I work in uh, Open Source Technology Center and Intel, and I'm PTL in Cola project for Okata Cycle. So, uh, if you've seen yesterday's keynote, there, as Steven said, there are a couple layers of, of uh, containers in OpenStack or OpenStack in containers. So, according to the recent surveys, deployment of OpenStack is still a big issue and upgrades is still a big issue, and uh, these two are very, very close together. So containers helps both. So it was only natural that at some point we need to create, uh, we need to use this new awesome thing to deploy stuff that containers are, and uh, we did it in Cola, and uh, as Steven said, uh, Cola, we started with Actually, yesterday on my presentation, you could see the we have a couple different trials on how to deploy, how to de actually deploy uh, containers. Ansible is the first one that actually worked, and it's ready now. It, I can show, I, I can show to try it, and uh, I won't actually agree with you, Stephen, that it's not cloud native. It is actually cloud native. It's about applications that are cloud native. It's how you deploy containers. It's you know it's uh, it's a different topic, and if you deploy them with Ansible, they can be just as cloud native. And we wanted to prove that OpenStack, as an application services, are actually pretty well made cloud native applications. And if you deploy Cola, you can actually see that's true. Good. Well, Gail, would you like to talk about Courier? Yes. Hi. Uh, I'm Gal Sagi. Uh, I've spent the last two and a half years working uh, mainly on OpenStack networking uh, and containers networking. Uh, it started with Tony uh, project career and the previous PTL of the project. Uh, we started the project because what we notice is that users are starting to deploy, like uh, Todd mentioned and everyone else, uh, containers side by side with OpenStack, whether it's isolated or whether it's the same environment. Uh, deploying containers inside OpenStack nested and today everyone are talking about uh, deploying OpenStack in containers uh, and what we notice in these environments that there are a different set of solutions and drivers and infrastructure for containers and for OpenStack and we said why like why can't we utilize and use the same infrastructure both for your containers and your uh, OpenStack workloads and this is uh, what career is all about, bridging uh, between these two worlds. And we started with the networking use case where we now have, uh, where you could use Kubernetes uh, or Docker or Mesos and actually map these models into Neutron. So you could, out of the box, any solution that you have uh, that support Neutron API can now also be used for your uh, containers networking, whether they are nested inside uh, VMs or on bare metal. Uh, and of course, this also expose all of OpenStack richness and flexibility uh, and advance services to your uh, containers. Great, so, so thank you for that information. And um, so I just want to see from a user perspective, now we have, you know, Courier, Cola, Magnum, and then, you know, you have OpenStack, you have containers, CNCF, OCI, all these things. So can, can you guys share with us, with the audience, that what are the use cases to, you know, as a, as a user, when should I use OpenStack only? 
when should I use uh, you know container uh, platform only, or when should I use um, containers on top of OpenStack and or you know OpenStack on top of container? Can you just give us use cases from a user perspective? Who would like to start? Sure. Okay. Mia. So, yes. uh, well, I think so. If everyone everyone here, I assume, is using OpenStack. OpenStack are virtual machines. Virtual machines are, have its differences between containers. And uh, I would say, if you need to run virtual machines, just use OpenStack. But on, the, uh, on that note, to use OpenStack, you need to deploy it. Then you can use Cola to do it, which means you will, using, you will be using container. On the other hand, if you, ha if you run just containers and your all workload is super cloud native, I'm pretty sure the new container en engines like Kubernetes or Mesos will be that will be perfect for you. There is also this use case which Steve mentioned, which probably will cons will be uh, true for a lot of people when you need both. When you need to be have uh, different workloads needs different tool sets. Like uh, certain things will need uh, stability and maturity and security of virtual machines or bare metal. Other workloads will be Cloud native, totally uh, cattle like um, things that could pretty much run on, uh, on Kubernetes. Then you can deploy Kubernetes cluster across your data center and uh, deploy OpenStack on part of it using, for example, Cola Kubernetes and keep rest of the uh, rest of the cluster ready for your cloud native workload. There is uh, one, one other, one other uh, use case, which actually will, con will use uh, Magnum, because as you probably know, containers are not exactly most secure. And, mo and uh, if you're concerned about security and you know, separation between uh, multi-tenancy, uh, multi separation between tenants, but still your tenants need to run cloud-native applications, you can make use of the very neat idea that Magnum has, which will, Magnum will pretty much spawn a Kubernetes cluster on top of virtual machines, so every tenant you have can have their own private Kubernetes cluster with all the nice things Kubernetes has to offer, while being completely secure and separated with the VM level of, say, of multi-tenancy from another tenant in your infrastructure. So uh, I think that's, that's pretty much sums it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure. yeah, if I can yeah. add, um, during the, f the during this past two years, I've seen everything like <laughs> all kind of mix and match uh, configurations and all kinds of setups and environment. Um, and I think, like with any other uh, technology, um, I don't think you want to set any kind of limitations. You need to. Uh, identify your use case, uh, identify your traffic patterns, identify what you're trying to do, and then really investigate what the solution gives you. Don't just, because I see a lot of people that are converting things just because there's a lot of talk or hype uh, talking about the specific technology or the other, uh, try to find out with reliable resource and testing what is best for you, uh, and after you found it, uh, think five years from now what will be uh, the best solution for you and plan for that. Yeah, I was just going to add when I was listening to his use cases and, and the thing that we're going to see is so there's sort of a time horizon of, of uh, how do I say this, uh, long running things and very short running things, right? And we're seeing the whole serverless world start to rear its head now and lots of uses around containers in that to spin things up very quickly. And so, so it's going to be the spectrum that you have and it's going to depend on you know, what you want to spend for your application as well too. What's the cost structure and behind that? Do you just need something to spin up quickly and go away and not want to have that whole server sitting there running either a VM or, or you know, running your containers under VMs or over VMs, et cetera. So, so this, this whole spectrum is going to be here and you need to explore that entire space as you build out what become your cloud native apps. So, you know, there's infrastructure that's now coming together around serverless. There's an open source project that's just starting up at Apache called OpenWhisk. Um, and there you'll be able to go and play and see and, and participate in that as well, too. So look at the whole spectrum and decide what makes sense for your application. Yeah, I, I, I would just like to add that uh, 
again, I think the converged cloud is a really solid model for larger enterprises. Uh, you know, the idea that virtual machines are going to go away is just not going to happen, right? We've got, uh, we've got uh, software that's 20, 30 years old that people are just now migrating uh, 10 years after VMs have kind of emerged. Uh, onto virtual machines. Uh, so those mach those applications are not going to be rewritten. Uh, cloud native is more of a uh, greenfield approach, which is great. Uh, I like greenfield. I'm kind of a tip of the spear engineer myself. So uh, I think that's very uh, a unique feature. Uh, I think we want to make sure that OpenStack and CNCF work well together. Uh, and I think uh, the projects we have today that we've identified kind of an early on uh, deliver on that uh, model, uh, there's probably more we can do. Uh, where we kind of cross over in the future is undefined. I think it kind of de 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 depends on uh, who's willing to lead the projects. Uh, and that's really what it comes down to. As far as uh, the converged cloud, that's, uh, that's going to be tackled. And uh, that, that's more for larger enterprises, whereas, uh, you know, maybe uh, to use to your question of whether or not uh, where where would you use these things, I think OpenStack might make sense in a smaller enterprise, uh, you know, 100 nodes or less. Uh, if you wanted the larger enterprise, you might want a thousand nodes of Kubernetes, and you might want 500 nodes of OpenStack, and you'd want that all on one platform. You wouldn't want uh, two things to maintain, because operators hate that. It increases operational expense, and that's a big problem for operators. Mm -hmm. So we know that, you know, like you said, it's going to be a converged hybrid, you know, um, with container, bare metal, and, um, and VM. And so do you think that what we have today with all these three, you know, um, container projects, Cola, Courier, Magnum, is there any need for other container-related projects um, in OpenStack? If there is, what do you think should, like, we should be thinking about? Okay, anybody? I know I never asked you guys this question, so. Uh, I guess. Sure. Oh, yeah, sure. I could say I'm, I'm not sure about any new project, but um, and this is something that we tried to do last summit uh, in the operators uh, summit. And it's a very important uh, for us, the people that are building the solutions and are driving these projects, uh, to understand the challenges and the problems better. So I do believe that we need a better collaboration first, of course, between the communities, containers and OpenStack, but also between uh, us and the people that are actually deploying and actually using these uh, capabilities to understand what is the priority, what needs to be addressed, uh, and what are the difficulties of running containers on OpenStack side by side. Mm -hmm. So I do, I, actually, I do have uh, an idea for a new project. I, I may not start myself because I've done that plenty of times and it's very painful. But uh, Todd mentioned OpenWhisk. I think OpenWhisk is fantastic in terms of uh, providing serverless. Serverless is a, a new thing. Uh, you know, there's uh, machine learning. That would be a new thing. Um, serverless is really interesting and OpenWhisk is really interesting uh, going into the Apache Foundation. Uh, maybe there's some opportunity to figure out how to get OpenWIS to work inside of an OpenStack ecosystem. Uh, that, I think that would be really compelling to people because I see serverless as kind of the next big disruptor in technology. Yeah. Anybody else want to add? Else? No, I like that. I think that's true. I think, you know, and, and the more that we as, as a community reach out and work with the other nascent projects as things come and evolve in this space and make them part of, of the community and the ecosystem that we have and are friendly, the, the better this is going to come out. Mm -hmm. and, and so keep that in mind. And I yeah. think that's a, just a great suggestion, Stephen. Excellent. I just want to uh, add that uh, there is some initiatives uh, for uh, Amazon Lambda-like, for, uh, for Swift, yeah. yeah. So. Um, and I wanted to say that, um, well, Docker was the first one that deployed container image-based. There's emerging project for Rocket, which uh, may also find its way into pretty much any, all the all the projects that we just mentioned, they are Docker-centric today. 
Kubernetes is moving more towards Rocket, so Rocket can be next uh, next thing that may, people may want to look at and make sure that p projects that work currently will work the same, work work with Rocket and other container engines uh, just as well. Or pretty much what we think need most now today is uh, not as much as new projects as to ensure that projects are that are there today are mature, are stable, and are well tested because containers are still new in operators' mindset. Mm -hmm. And operators are not very trusting, trusting folk because they have reasons not to trust uh, the new thing, which means we need to make sure that uh, containers will reach the level of maturity when actually people would deploy it without having to fear for their life. And uh, I think that's the biggest challenge today in deployment of uh, of <laughs> yeah, well. well, they're more cautious because they are all about carrier grade, right? Exactly. That's that's the thing, and I bet nobody here will, you know, will uh, will say that container are carrier grade today. Yeah. So, I, I just argue with that a little bit. I think containers, uh, at least as we use of them in Cola today, are very rock solid, um, and I think as Courier uses them, when we did our Courier integration with Cola, that's rock solid. Uh, I think Magnum, the container implementation there, very rock solid. Uh, you know, some of the, the newer features of Docker, uh, that those things may not be rock solid. So, but everything that is in OpenStack today is rock solid, and I don't think operators should be concerned with those things. Uh, I would bet my data on it. So. Yeah. What, what I'm, I'm saying you essentially, <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying essentially <laughs> is uh, containers are still new and they need, need to be there for us sure. for time. You mentioned Docker is not rock solid. If Docker is not rock solid, then we, you know, then we need to make it rock solid. That's, that's essentially what I, what I meant. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> It, but I think it is. 112, yeah, but, you know, 112 maybe wasn't as, as stable because of some of the things they did at sort of the last minute, but I think that, that over time that's going to get better too. Yeah, oh, so. of course. Time, okay. is what, time at work is what we need. Yeah. Well, and, but containers the, have been around for a really long time, actually. I, right, so. I mean, Elixir is there for 20 or so years now. So yes. Like, yeah. So. I'm glad I have uh, Michal and Steven standing far apart from each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we beat each other. No. Yeah, other up later. Yeah. So, <laughs> we're then, gonna, we're gonna brawl later. But then they bond in the container space. So so yeah, so um, I can see that, you know, like you know, some people might think it's very mature, some people think no, you know, it's still new. So from a user perspective, right, like you said, operators or users perspective, if they want to adopt container, if they're already using VM, OpenStack, if they want to adopt container, what's your advice on, you know, how they can, you know, get in there with certain, you know, peace of mind and safety and adopt um, container in the OpenStack environment in a uh, more of a safer way? Who would like to address that? I'll take a crack at it. Uh, you have to you have to train on container technology. Uh, it's not something. It's just like training on OpenStack, right? So it's not like you get OpenStack and then you're good to go. Even though with Cola, you know, you can deploy 120 nodes in 20 minutes. You don't know how to use OpenStack after you deploy it. We can deploy it really easily, but we don't know how to use it. Uh, well, I know how to use it, but not everybody knows how to use it. Containers are the same state, except, uh, you know, they're newer, so there's less people that have experience with containers. Mm -hmm. So I think if you want to learn how to use containers, uh, training is a good way to, to go. And the best way to train, in my opinion, is on-the-job training. So mm -hmm. uh, experiment with containers, see how containers work. Um, again, you know, I think uh, looking at OpenWIST would be interesting from a, from a kind of where the future is going to be uh, maybe a couple years down the road. Um, that's, a, that's a totally different programming model than even containers, even though it uses containers as an implementation detail. So those sorts of things uh, are, to, are things to train on, um, but training is key. And it, I don't mean training by professional trainers, I mean training by doing work, real work. Yeah. 
Yeah, think, and, and partner with people who, who understand the technology and are a part of it and, you know, do POCs and other things to get those who can transfer some knowledge into you working with you and, and you know, don't be afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. Right? There's plenty in the community as well, too, to talk to people here obviously, you know, want to share. We're here at summits and, you know, come participate in the sessions, but, but find a friend. When you're here, make a friend who knows something about containers and share and, you know, next summit, come to get together as well, too, and keep, keep moving it. You know? Do you think if, if there's a room for us to, you know, create reference architecture or any kind of cookbooks or any kind of tips, stuff that in the repository that people can kind of get a kickstart. Well, those things are coming here, and the foundation yeah. is, is, is working towards that. And then, even in this last user survey, we had folks who were, you know, companies who are using all of the OpenStack infrastructure but not using Nova and using Kubernetes mm -hmm. with that infrastructure, right? We see that in the survey results, right? So us being able to then develop a reference architecture around that and help other people understand that is something that we think we'll, we'll want to go and do. So um, we had a, a good session with the analysts and, and this very same question came up. So, you know, we're, we're going to work through that and, and we'll provide those things and we'll provide those, that information and it'll be part of the reference architectures that we have. Up. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so I just wanted to add that when I said that containers are still early in the game, in act, at least in OpenStack deployment field, you're much better with them than without them. <laughs> uh, so uh, regardless to what I said before, just try it. Try it and see what's the different, what the differences lie. What the actual issues are. There are issues. There will be issues for the next years. As a, but you'll still be better off with them. So I think it's worth to just try and play with it and see whether or not it meets your needs. Great. So, um, yeah, I have a few uh, minutes left, and I'd like to open up to the audience for questions. I have one. Could somebody hang her, uh, give her a mic? I probably don't need a mic, do I? Uh, no, you need to be recorded. Uh -oh, Everything has to be recorded. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone uh, on the panel. I have a question about, I missed a session this morning on Zoom that used to be called Higgins, apparently, and it's saying it's, also, it's a new project in OpenStack. Um, and that Magnum's move to just uh, supporting container orchestration engines. Can you tell me how Zune fits in? Yeah, so I can answer that question a little bit. Um, basically, uh, Magnum started out with an API that allowed an abstraction over Kubernetes APIs. And Zune uh, took that abstraction part and uh, provided it separately. Now, Zune's not in the Big Tent. It's kind of a new emerging project. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, I think uh, the, the early feedback we got when we did develop Magnum was that people wanted to use the native tools provided by uh, Google and Docker for the clients. They didn't want to use an abstraction. So that's, that's my general take on the situation. But Zune still, I think, serves a purpose, and I think people will be interested in it uh, you know, once it joins Big Ten. So, uh, to, uh, to Steven's points, what Magdub really does today is it deploys Kubernetes. And with Kubernetes, you can deploy whatever. What Zoom does is uh, to kind of deploy Docker without the Kubernetes in between. Like, just use Nova to it. Like, it, it, there was, so, this is, there, is a drive, there was a driver called Nova Elixir, Nova Docker, and that's pretty much the next generation of this. Mm -hmm. Good. The native clients are the big thing, though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. Next question. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, you say, please test, please play with containers. What about the, 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 the other way when as a cloud provider, I must deliver the cloud. I must ensure the production grade. Car, you're great. So what do you think about the new way of using or administrating the open site layer or a cloud native application in the context of containers? It's not the same tooling to monitor, to administrate the application, and to react. Can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah, just uh, do you mean OpenStack specific or 
could be OpenStack specific then at Cola level? What's the impact of the of the Dockerizing OpenStack? So what's the impact for administrating OpenStack? So consider containers as a glorified package in a Cola. Like if you if you're talking about Ansible version of Cola, Ansible deployment Cola, it's a glorified package. We just uh, Build the packages before we do we install them. We build images and then we just push them to the nodes. There is very little impact uh, on the things like monitoring, like logging. In fact, in Colat itself, we already have deployment of uh, log the logging stack. We have uh, demo deployment of the monitoring stack. But if you want to you, uh, you know hook it up to your own set of tool set, everything's possible. It may require you to do some thinking. We're more than happy to help you, but the runtime of the container, in effect, is not that much different than the runtime of the classical application. And as, as I said, uh, if you try it, if uh, there are many, many benefits from using containers, and uh, it's worth it to, to to add this, you know, some level of complexity because the benefits are significant. Okay, can I just follow up? So uh, if we're just talking about colon and OpenStack on top of uh, a container environment, uh, there's 12 APIs that we use to operate an OpenStack deployment, only 12 APIs. So it's very simple and straightforward to learn. Uh, if you're using something like Docker, you know, there's, uh, I don't know, 60 or 70 APIs plus a whole bunch of variables and, or sorry, not uh, variables, but config options and whatnot. So it depends on what your use case is. So that's why I asked the follow-up question if you were more interested in OpenStack or more interested in containers, because containers uh, are not as easy to use today. That'll change, but they're not as easy to use today as, uh, for example, Cola is. But Cola, we really focus on operator uh, experience. That's, that's like our mission, pretty much. We want our operators to have a good experience. So 12, 12 APIs, we want to keep it nice and simple so people could keep it in their head and understand it. So does anybody have anything? No, that's, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Sounds good. Sure. Any more question? It's a rare opportunity that we get all these experts on stage. Is there, uh, Is there actually, more? there's a mic here if anybody wants, wants to oh, Okay, cue. Yeah, we have one question here. Uh, oh. <laughs> Thanks. So you said that basically horses for courses with regards to application deployment paradigms. You could go OpenStack, you could go serverless, you could go somewhere in between. If you look forward five years, What's the rough fraction that's deploying by those, each of those paradigms? Predict the future for me. That's a good question. I know it's a tough one. Yeah, you know, I'd like to guess, but uh, I don't really have any idea. Ta has a crystal ball. Okay. So, yeah. you know, all these things evolve over time. If you, if you look right now, you'll see that um, you know, VMs dominate the world, right? And, and containers are coming and people are trying to put them into production. Most of these things take, you know, on a time horizon, five, ten years to really become solid and become part of the infrastructure. So I, I think that most obviously it's a sliding scale that's going to happen here. And I think, you know, the serverless world is probably ten years out. I think with, you know, some large fraction, say 25 percent of, of what's going on, there are more if the cost model works out and, and latency issues and other things are, are handled. I'd say that the, you know, in the five-year horizon, containers are going to take a very large chunk of what's going on. 30, 40 percent of what we do will be there. But I think that in, in that time horizon, you're still going to see, you know, VMs substantially be what they are today. Um, and, it's, and it's not just, you know, KVM or it's VMware and other things are still prevalent and, and will be for a long time. Good. Thanks, Tom, for rescuing. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, with that, I think we just ran out of time. Well, thank you so much, uh, audience, and thank you so much, panelists, and uh, it was a good job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.